Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the Freeform Deformation Tool with Cartoon Animator 5. This flexible tool can add a whole new layer of dynamic energy to your animations, allowing you to fully utilize animation techniques such as squash and stretch. In previous versions, this tool was only available for props and sprites, however now we can apply it to any object or character in your scene. Let's look at the basic settings first using this cute little guy. Once he's selected, you can find the FFD editor on the side panel and a wireframe will cover your character's mesh. At the top of the presets section, you'll see a number of different presets for different scenarios which we'll explore a little bit later. For now, let's quickly hide the bone display and focus on the control points. You can click and drag a single point, or else multi-select a number of different points and move them simultaneously for a different type of deformation. You can hit Reset Selected to reset the selected points back to default and also reset all for all of the points on your character mesh. You'll likely use these two buttons often when creating your FFD animations. You can also use the 1 to 6 hotkeys to switch between the presets, so let's give that a shot. If we apply some of the presets from the first set, you can see that the control points form slightly different shapes according to the thumbnail. These are quick ways to toggle between common shapes. If you select Additive, you can combine presets or select the same preset twice in order to increase the strength. In some cases, you may want to modify the control points symmetrically like this case. To do so, simply select the Mirror checkbox and then set the axis from the drop-down menu. In some cases, you may want to have more uniform spacing amongst your control points to achieve a certain perspective. In this case, you can see my editing might be a bit messy, but I can use the Average button to produce an evenly spaced result. Adjusting the corner points and then using Average will generate the strongest result. There's also a useful flip feature that lets you mirror the control points from one side of your character's mesh to the other. If we open up the timeline and create a number of flips at 10 frame intervals, we can quickly and easily create a cool little walking motion in just a few seconds. Another useful little feature is the intensity, which will basically increase the strength of the current layout of your control points. In this case, if we press the plus button, it will increase the strength of the deformation in that direction. We encourage you to mess around with all of the different presets available as they are incredibly easy to apply and can give you some really fun and bouncy animations in no time. You can also use them as a starting point and then manually fine tune the positions and timing of the control points to get the desired effect. Okay, now that we have the basics down, let's look at how we can use freeform deformation to enhance an existing motion. In this scenario, I'm applying a simple run loop to our shaggy friend here. The basic run looks okay, but we can definitely improve it. To do so, I'm going to enter into the timeline and click and drag on the edge of the motion clip to loop it a couple of times. I'll then use the set end frame button in the timeline to set our project length to right at the end of the third loop. If we put looping on and play back, we'll see our doggy's run continue until we stop it. Let's open up the FFD editor now, and we're going to use a couple of squash and stretch presets. Basically what we want to do here is when our dog's legs are close together, we're going to apply a horizontal squash preset. And when its legs are reaching or lunging forward, we're going to apply a horizontal stretch preset. We can then copy and paste those respective keyframes in the timeline to correspond with the frames where we want the body to squash and stretch. Once that's done, you'll see a much more dynamic and energetic looking result. If you want to go into even more detail, you can right click on any of the keyframes in the FFD layer key track and choose any of the transition curve presets as well. We'll have more tutorials that cover this feature in more detail. Once you have a motion with FFD editing, you can save it and apply it to other actors or animals that have the same bone structure. To save the motion, simply go to the Custom tab of the Content Manager, then go into the appropriate animation folder and hit Save. 
We can then apply that same motion to our little companion bulldog here, and you'll see the FFD modifications are preserved. You can also increase the intensity of the effect after the motion has been applied by right-clicking the FFD clip in the respective track and then selecting FFD clip intensity. That comes up with a simple slider that allows you to adjust this strength to whatever level you like. You probably don't want it to be too intense in most cases, but then again, it depends on the scenario. That's it for this tutorial, guys. Hopefully you've got a foundation on the basics of the freeform deformation tool now and how you can use it to enhance your character and prop animations in a variety of ways. Stay tuned to our channel for more tutorials, and I'll see you in the next video.